A Stewart 7A model steam plant, part 20, refitting the engine to the steam plant. But first, this morning these arrived in the post. 80 grit sanding belts for my Sealy 1 inch belt sander. I also got some the other day that were in mixed grits, but these are all 80 grit, quite coarse, and ideal for shaping parts in a very unmechanical way on my belt sander. It's not really engineering, I suppose. It's more of an art than a science. Over the years, I've made many model aircraft, and a belt sander is a very useful tool for trimming the balsa wood and the plywood. And many years ago, when I started making steam engines, I also found them very useful for metal shaping. The other package was from Blackgate's Engineering because I can't drive over there anymore as we are in lockdown. So Matt at Blackgate's Engineering sent me the parts in the post. I'd like to take this opportunity once again to thank Boyd, who sent me a gift voucher. It bought me quite a lot of silicone O-rings for my stock, and you can never have too many of those in your life. One of the things I really like about Blackgate's Engineering is they always wrap things up in lots of newspaper. So opening these parts, it's a bit like playing pass the parcel with yourself, except you always win the prize. And my prize is an assortment of steel and hexagon bars. Whenever I go to Blackgate's Engineering, I always buy more than I need, and that way I always have a good metal stock on the shelf. This is the old broken belt sander belt, but I'm not throwing it away because it's quite useful for sanding in the lathe. I think I'll give the engine a final run on the bench before I bolt it in place on the steam plant. I received a question from one of my Patreon supporters. And the question was about the alignment of the eccentric rods via the expansion link to the valve fork. Here's a quick clip of the engine from the other side showing the flywheel. It's running quite well now. When the engine is in the reverse position, and this is done by lifting the lever, the expansion link is as far to the left as I dare make it. In fact, with the reversing lever in this up position, if anything, it's pulling the expansion link slightly too hard. In an ideal world, you would move the expansion link and the eccentric rod would be perfectly in line with the valve fork at all times, but this is not the case. At least with this engine, it's not. Here's the lever once again in the up position, and as you can see, alignment of the eccentric rod and the valve fork is not perfect. I'm going to slow this next clip down so you can see what's happening. The alignment of the valve rod and the eccentric is relative to where the expansion link is during one rotation of the crankshaft. It moves a bit as you can see, but it's not a massive issue. The engine, as you can hear, works perfectly. And when I put the engine into forward gear, it's the same sort of thing, but a bit more in line, I suppose, in forward gear, which is OK, because most of the time the engine will be running in forward gear. It's all to do with the manufacturing standard and the general dimensions and amount of movement on the valve gear. Either way, it's not a problem, the engine runs very well. This series has always been called a Stuart Model 7A steam plant. Here is the rest of the plant. I haven't shown much of this yet. It spent about two years sat on my bedside cabinet. That's probably why it's quite dusty. So I'll take this opportunity to clean it up a bit before I mount the engine. The boiler is a Blackgate's boiler. This is a great little steam plant. It's made from copper, silver soldered and lagged in brass with some insulation. A while back my friend from the USA, who is the owner of this steam plant, asked me if I would clad the boiler in mahogany. But as there's so much mahogany on the baseboard, I don't think this is a good idea and we've agreed to leave it in brass. The construction of the baseboard is very interesting and very well made. It has a built-in tubular sump, which is connected to the drain on the top of the baseboard, which receives the output from the drain cocks and the water gauge blowdown valve. This is a nice touch too. There's a drain underneath the engine. I made the condenser for this steam plant, and also did some work on it for the original owner. This part of the construction was a pain. Originally, these very small 10BA bolts went through and were double lock nutted on the inside. And initially, removing the engine from the baseboard almost drove me mad because the only way I could undo the bolt was with a small spanner and many rotations thereof. I modified this design because even the box bed was threaded and that's all you need to hold this part in place. I just dispense with the internal lock nuts and use shorter bolts and it was still a very fiddly job screwing the brass bracket into place. 
the second 5BA bolt that holds the engine to the baseboard was very easy to fit, using a socket first, followed by my Barco spanner. Time for a run, I think. The engine sounds much better on the baseboard. I haven't connected the exhaust pipe yet. It's got plenty of power, the drain cocks work, what more can you want? The baseboard is very dense, so I'm losing some of the soundboard effect of my workbench, which makes the engine sound even better. Now that the tightness of the valve gear is wearing off, the engine is starting to run even better. The only problem with running the engine at this speed is most of the oil very quickly gets flung off the bearings, so it's a good idea to stop periodically and re-oil everything. I'm still using my usual Hallett Oils lubricating oil, but if the engine was in steam, I would use steam oil on the small end, the trunk guide and the big end. In the last episode, I showed me putting some steam oil into the airline, and this lasts for ages. You can hear the difference once the engine's been oiled. With the engine piped to the condenser, it makes a really nice fluey sound, especially when it's running fast and edited into slow motion. This series is not finished yet. The owner wants me to fit a Stuart Models boiler feed pump to it. Not the hand pump, I mean a steam-powered boiler feed pump. He also asked me if I would paint it the same colour as the engine, which I will do, and I will also be making a steam turret to supply steam to the engine and to the boiler feed pump independently, and I will also need to make a double check valve adapter for the boiler. So I've got plenty to do during this strange isolation, live on your own and never see anybody period. So me and my invisible friend would just like to say, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and we hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.